The Detroit Lions have one of the best offensive lines in the NFL, and I think it's severely underrated. But today, we're going to analyze that tape and really talk about why it's such a great unit. You have a really nice 8-yard run here by the running back, and you can see right away what makes this unit so good. You're going to get a great block here by the right guard, and Panay Sewell is going to have a simple block here on Bolton, the inside linebacker. The running back's going to just pick up 8 yards. Super simple concept, super simple blocks. But it's part of what makes this unit one of the best units in the NFL. And today we're going to go over a handful of plays and really analyze the tape. Very, very fired up for this film breakdown. Let's jump right into it. All right, you guys, check this rep out and watch the center here on this one. This right here is a very, very difficult thing to do. Frank Ragnall is not only going to snap the ball, but he's going to pull out in front of this play. And he's going to get out there and do a really, really nice job making contact. And you can see the running back picks up a number of yards on this play. To me, this is such a beautiful job, and you really see it in slow motion. You really see the center get out of there and figure out who to block. Figure out how to process this, right? You see right away here, you got a really nice pin block by the rookie tight end. And within this play, the center is going to process that. Understanding Laporta has his block, he's going to look up to the next level, and he's going to pick off number 50, and he's going to hook him. To me, this is a absolutely beautiful block by a really, really good center. Arguably one of the best centers in the NFL. And what's crazy about this block is it's such a simple concept, but it's very, very effective. And it works because of guys like this who are able to reach in front of blocks, pick guys off. Panay Sewell's going to get out here in front of the inside linebacker. Really nice down block by Taylor Decker. Great block that we've already kind of analyzed by the tight end. And of course, that's going to let both the left guard, Jackson, and the center kind of pull out and get out in front. Just a really, really, really nice job. Just a top tier job, if you guys ask me, by the entire offensive line. Let's get into the next rep. Check this play out. You got an 8-yard run. This is going to be an inside zone to the right of the screen. Fantastic job by the entire offensive line. You really see why this unit is a special unit with plays like this. If you guys watch Panay Sewell here... He has a very difficult block here, all the way to the inside of this defensive tackle. The D tackle is playing the two eye technique, which is the inside shoulder of the guard. Very, very difficult block. The guard has to make contact with the D tackle here in the hopes that Panesul is able to reach to him. And in this instance, they actually do a pretty good job. You can see the guard's going to make contact with number 99. Panesul is going to try to reach to the inside. He's not able to fully get there. But he does a good enough job where he holds the block long enough that the running back's able to kind of slip past him. Of course, within this play, I think the right guard here, Big V, does a fantastic job. He's not only going to help Panay Sewell within the block initially, but you see he's going to climb up to number 50 and get up to number 50. Without that block right there by the right guard, this play does not work. And this play right here pops for 8 yards because of blocks like that. But even more so than that, if you guys watch the center, the right guard, the right tackle, they're all basically going to do a great job here hooking these guys outwards. The center is going to double team here, get up to the linebacker, make really nice contact. And you see that this play pops because of pretty much all the guys up front. Center does a great job pushing out number 93 as you guys see there. Gets up to the inside linebacker, blocks the inside linebacker outwards. And of course, with the blocks from the right guard, right tackle, the play just worked perfectly. This is a really, really nice job by the offensive line. One of the hardest plays to stop for a defense is a very well executed outside zone run. And here's a great example of that. I will look at it from both angles, this angle from this side, as well as the end zone angle from the other side. You guys can see it here as well. This play is just very, very difficult to stop. This is one of those things where when you look at it from an offensive line perspective, and how well these guys may be able to execute it, you recognize why it's so hard to stop, right? First and foremost, watch the guard here. Watch him get up to Curtis Bolton, the inside linebacker, and just straight up get rid of him. Straight up delete him out of this play. Bam. Absolutely removes him. Now, I'm not sure if that's an illegal block. I know there's rules around chop blocking downfield. I don't think it's illegal, but don't quote me on that. Outside of him, if you guys watch both the left guard and center, Watch what they do together. They're going to pick off number 91 up to number 50, the inside linebacker. And they absolutely move those guys out of there. And this play right here pops for about five yards because of, once again, the offensive line just doing a really, really good job. All right, you guys, check this play out. Third down. Jared Goff is going to throw a touchdown pass on what looks like a mesh concept. And this play right here 
kind of shows you the strengths of this offensive line. You know, yesterday the Lions had an okay day on the ground, right? 4.1 yards per attempt. It's not great, but it's not bad either. But really, their success came when it came to pass rush, right? Their success came when it came to pass blocking. And to me, it's very, very clear that this Detroit Lions offensive line is very smart. They communicate very well. And they kept the quarterback really, really clean yesterday. And you can see right away the communication that this offensive line has. I mean, look at the left tackle here. Look at the center here. Uh, look at the right guard as well. They're communicating it. You can see what they're telling one another. And the communication's a big part of having success when it comes to pass pro. And you can see in this instance, the right guard center are going to pick off 51. The tackle here does a great job by himself on a pretty good defensive end. But if he needs to help, the right guard is there as well. And all that only happens because the left guard, left tackle are able to basically single block this. If you guys watch the left guard, left tackle, they're going to do a great job. Both guys do an absolute great job stopping their guys. And Jared Goff is able to go through his reads, go through the progressions, and he has that time, right? And keep in mind, we've slowed this down. So, you know, this is half speed. We, we can speed this up to normal speed. And you see how long the offensive line gives the quarterback. A very clean pocket, no pressure. He's able to go through the reads. That's a great job right there by the offensive line. Now, there were a couple of plays in which the Detroit Lions running backs ended up getting hit in the backfield. And one of the things Kansas City Chiefs are notoriously known for is really blitzing their, their cornerbacks, really bringing them off the edge. And it's not just the corners, right? Uh, they blitz the shit out of people. And part of why the Lions had so many negative runs is because when you run these zone runs, as you see here, oftentimes if you're bringing the cornerback, the same way you'll see number 22 come off the edge here, it makes it very hard to run these outside zone runs. Because oftentimes these guys go unblocked, and if the receivers aren't quick enough to pick that up, then this is kind of what happens, right? You guys can see this play here where the running back ends up losing a yard or so, and it's because of plays like this. And here's the thing, right? One of these receivers has to process this a little bit better. Now, I'm not sure exactly which one has the corner and which one would have the safety, but one of those two guys has to pick them up, and you can see the guy basically blows up the entire play, lose about a yard or two. And I state this because... You know, some people do look at the 4.1 yards per attempt average, and they really say that the Lions O-line can't be that good if that's the case. And I'm telling you guys, there were so many 5, 6, 7, 8 yard runs, and there were also so many of these type of runs, right, where you lose a yard. And I would say that I've counted up to two already that were like this, and keep in mind, we're like one third of the way through this tape. So I did want to just kind of point that out. But there were runs like this where the running back got hit behind the line of scrimmage, and it wasn't necessarily because of the offensive line. Now, I want to give some credit here to the running back, David Montgomery. You know, yesterday there was a play that was pointed out in which he got absolutely crushed on. And that was one play, but there were so many plays like this. But the guy does a great job keeping the quarterback clean. Now, this play obviously is not caught, but I want to point this play out specifically because if you guys watch the action of the quarterback, look at the quarterback initially go to the right of your screen and then switch the ball over to the left. And if you guys don't realize what's happening here within this play, the running back is actually supposed to take a step to the right and then come back over here to the left. And the quarterback is supposed to play action it this way. And the running back should eventually come over to the left side here, but he's not going to. Instead, he's going to actually recognize something super quickly and he's not even going to care or worry about that second part of the play action. He's going to just straight up step out there and pick up the blitzing cornerback. And to me, this is such great awareness and this is such great, this is such a great play. And I, I can't say it more beyond than just stating it. To be able to recognize super quickly that the cornerback's coming, to not even go through the entire motion. And that right there is just a heads up play. And even then he does a great job with the block, right? So I do want to just point that out because I know some people pointed out the play in which he got laid out. Not a big deal. Great pass blocker, in my opinion. Let's get into the next rep. Alrighty, guys. So Jared Goff was technically sacked one time in yesterday's game. And here's the sack. You're going to see number 51 does a great job up against the left guard. And he basically just pushes him right back into the quarterback. And the quarterback tries to kind of run through, step up, try to minimize the amount of yards he's going to lose on the play. And he's going to ultimately get sacked. I would say this is a losing rep by Jonah Jackson because 51 gets both hands right to the inside. And you can really see that, right? Both hands right to the inside. 
basically going to push this guy back, and you can't have that as an NFL guard. You got to be able to anchor down. And in this instance, he's not able to. And he gets pushed right back into the quarterback, and of course, the quarterback gets taken down. Not a big deal, but I did want to point it out. This is a losing rep by the left guard. And of course, on this channel, we look at both positive and negative reps. Let's go ahead and get to the next play. Check the rep out here. Watch the left tackle and left guard do a great job processing the defensive line game. To me, this is part of what makes this offensive line so great, right? It's that communication. It's that ability to really know what the responsibility is within each player. You're going to get the defensive tackle to go first. The defensive end is going to come around. And it's going to be the left guard that has the harder of the two jobs. Because what the left guard has to do within this play is he has to make contact with the defensive tackle first. He has to take that defensive tackle, push him into Taylor Decker, and then Decker has to be able to kind of pick that up. At the same time, once all of that happens, Jackson has to come back around and pick up the defensive end. And within this play, they all do it perfectly. Now, would it have been a little bit better if they didn't get as pushed back into the quarterback? Absolutely. But you do got to keep in mind, teams draw these plays up to cause pressure. Teams design these things to get after the quarterback. And in this instance, they do a fantastic job keeping the quarterback clean, picking up the game, Allowing the quarterback to deliver a really nice pass right in the middle of the field. Great job if you guys ask me. One of the guys that really impressed me for the Lions was Jonah Jackson. Talk about having your centers back. Uh, the center here is going to get caught into a bad spot. Not that it didn't look like he was going to recover. But you get a guard to back you up the way Jackson does here. To me, it's just a really, really nice shot. I mean, he recognizes this right away. He recognizes that the defensive end falls off. The defensive end here is going to drop into coverage. And you see right away Jackson recognizes that. And he's going to go from the outside and he's going to come back to the inside. And he's going to crush this defensive tackle. And again, like I said, I don't think Frank Ragnall wasn't necessarily in a bad spot. You guys can tell if you guys look closely at his left arm. He does a great job recovering right there. He gets that hand right back onto the shoulder pad. And he, at this point, just has to reposition his feet, which is something that I've seen him do in the past. But again, you guys see that Jackson basically clears it out. That's just a really, really nice job. You see the pass does get completed. Let's get into the next rep. Check this out. The offensive line is going to run what is called crunch. It's a concept that offensive linemen run to, to block a certain play. And the offensive line does a really nice job within this play. Uh, you guys can see it. I'm going to slow it down. So it's much easier to see it actually develop. It's a really nice job. Really, you're going to get a lot of guys kind of flipping and blocking and folding. As you'll see, 72 and 73, both guards, are basically going to come around the tackle and center. The tight end's going to come and really trap the D tackle there. And that's really what sets this play up. Uh, it's really the, the block on the defensive tackle on the front side. Uh, because what ends up happening when 72 pulls out towards the right, and it's not a pull, it's actually called a fold block. What ends up happening is number 50, the inside linebacker, believes the play is going to go to the right because he's seen that guard pull out that way. So 50 is going to naturally point out to the right. He's going to naturally start to take those steps to the right. But what he doesn't realize is that the center is kind of setting him up. Now, he obviously runs himself out of the play, so the center doesn't have to block him. But you see the same thing happen with both the left guard and left tackle. Left guard's going to initially fake to the inside. And then he's going to block to the outside, right? That fake is really just to try to trick the linebacker. But him blocking to the outside makes the inside linebacker right here freeze. And it almost seems like he's stepping over to the right. And you can see the play is actually to the left, right? So great job right there. Great block as well by the rookie tight end. Absolutely crushes number 93. Great contact, sticks with him, puts him into the ground. Really, really nice job right there. Let's get into the next rep. All right, you guys, one of the final reps to this breakdown is this play right here. This is the touchdown run by Montgomery. I mean, this is just blocked perfectly, man. To me, having a great offensive line the way the Detroit Lions have, it's very difficult to stop, right? It's very difficult to contain if you're on the defensive side. All right, this play right here is just blocked so perfectly for the running back. And really, the running back just has to make one person miss. When you guys look at this play here, and you guys look at the defensive tackle block down on number 93, but more than blocking him down, he's going to take this guy and absolutely move him out of there. To me, this is a really, really nice job. And you really see it develop here in slow motion. But it's not just Panay Sewell's block. You know, I think Sam Laporta is one of the best 
blocking young tight ends in the NFL because of plays like this. He gets into the linebacker, gets his shoulder pads to the correct side, and you just see it develop between Panay Sewell, Sam Laporta, the lane develops, and you get the running back in a one-on-one situation with that safety the way you do here, and he just makes the guy miss and scores a touchdown off of it. I mean, this is absolutely beautiful if you guys ask me. Such a super simple concept, but it works perfectly as you guys see on this play, and the play scores a touchdown. All right, David Montgomery is able to obviously score a touchdown off of this play, uh, and Panay Sewell does a great job crushing his guy now. Laporta does a great job. Just a really, really nice overall concept if you guys ask me. Check out the block right here by the right guard. A really, really nice job. To me, this is the type of stuff that makes, you know, an individual offensive lineman good. It's understanding little things like how to snatch a guy downwards, how to use leverage, how to push a guy into the ground that's really trying to use you to try to stay up. And what I mean by that is this defensive tackle wants to use the offensive lineman to kind of hold him up. The offensive lineman is basically not going to allow that to happen. Instead, he's going to move himself and snatch number 91 downwards or push him downwards. And 91's in the ground. And even more than that, you look at the design of this play. You look at the right tackle and what he does. You look at the tight end and what he does, right? To me, this is just a great job by all of these guys up front to pick off some of the backside defenders. You pick up a really, really nice amount of yards. Running back makes a guy miss. Just like that, that's a great job right there. Alrighty, guys, third and two, final play of the game for the Detroit Lions. The biggest play. And you just see that physicality. I mean, to me, this is just a really, really nice job by the offensive line. Uh, I think the Detroit Lions have a top five unit. And five may be saying, you know, that's that may not even be high enough to say they're top five. Like, they're arguably one of the top two or three units. I would say there's no question it's between the Eagles, the Browns, and the Lions as the best offensive line in the NFL. And you guys see on tape why. And I know some people will say, well, Chris Jones technically didn't play. And yes, that's true. These are still NFL starting caliber defensive players for the Chiefs. And come next week, it'll be the same exact thing happening for the Lions. Of course, we will break them down next week as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If this is the first time you're on this channel, consider subscribing. We will be doing Lions content this season on this channel. And I'll see you guys next time with another video.